Thank you, uh, Gloria, for that great uh, introduction. It's brilliant to uh, hear that you're back at work after being furloughed. It's a great sign that London's recovery has started. And I'm in no doubt you'll have a fantastic future ahead when this great city reopens. Thank you, Adrian, for that brilliant speech. I absolutely agree with you that London's arts and culture is what helps to make this the greatest city in the world. After an extremely difficult time for the arts and creative sectors, I look forward to our theatres and cultural venues opening up once again. I know we're all waiting to get the chance to see Adrian treading the boards once more very soon. I also want to thank Margaret and everyone at the Globe for allowing us to make history by holding this signing-in ceremony at this iconic London location. And looking around, wow. It's a privilege to do this here, and it's something I'll never forget. I stand here today truly humbled by the trust that Londoners have placed in me to serve a second term as mayor. I promise to do my utmost to repay the trust by working faithfully and tirelessly over the next three years to stand up for London and to deliver on the pledges that I've made. A lot has changed since the last time I signed in as mayor five years ago. But the common thread that will continue to run through everything I do as mayor will be my commitment to a fairer, more equal, more prosperous city for all Londoners, irrespective of race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, disability, or background. I'll never, ever forget that London gave me the opportunities to go from a council estate to being mayor of the greatest city in the world. And rather than being diminished, my desire to ensure that all Londoners get that same shot at reaching their full potential burns stronger than ever today. It's fitting that we're here at the Globe today because the history of this iconic place is a tale of resilience and renewal. During Shakespeare's time, the original theatre had to close for long periods, often to prevent the spread of the plague. But London's theatres always opened their doors and stages again, and they always went on to bigger and better things, just like today's Globe will do this summer. And this speaks to the times throughout our city's rich history when Londoners have had to reassess, renew, and rebuild a better London following disaster and devastation, whether from fires, pandemic, or war. Now it's our generation's turn to take on that challenge, not only to ensure that we bounce back as quickly as possible, but as we do so, we shape a fairer, greener, more united city for all Londoners. This is my mission, to put the dark days of the past year behind us and to deliver a better and brighter future for everyone who calls this amazing, diverse city home. And there's no time to waste. That's why the work begins anew today, to reignite our city and to kick-start our economy as London 
continues to open up. As promised, this means making jobs, jobs, jobs a top priority in everything we do and putting young Londoners at the heart of our recovery. It means backing our businesses, both large and small, to help them not just to survive, but to thrive. And it means banging the drum for London to attract the jobs, tourism and investment our city needs. To this end, I'm excited to announce today that we're launching the biggest domestic tourism campaign that London has ever seen. We're calling it Let's Do London. It's a call to action. It's a message to Londoners and people across the country that our capital city stands ready to entertain, inspire and enthrall once again. And it's a chance for us to champion our businesses, cultural institutions and attractions that have suffered so dearly during the pandemic. The year-long campaign will bring together London's leading hospitality, cultural and retail organisations to entice people back into the heart of our city, where they can experience the magic of London. It will include London's famous chefs and restaurants coming together to promote and celebrate our world-class cuisine. Exciting new public art installations to attract people into central London. New events at famous tourist attractions. Outdoor film screenings. Late night, late night openings of museums, galleries and cultural venues. The return of major creative festivals like London Fashion Week and much, much more. This huge campaign will be a great opportunity to remind everyone what makes London so special. And it'll help us to get the buzz back in our city that we've all so sorely missed. As well as this unflinching focus on the urgent task of our recovery, I promise to also continue to work day and night to tackle the long-standing issues that matter most to Londoners. Safer streets, more affordable housing, more support for young Londoners, and action to tackle the twin emergencies of air pollution and climate change. On crime, we'll continue to be both tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime. This includes putting even more police officers on the streets at the same time as investing record amounts in new opportunities for young Londoners. When it comes to housing, we'll continue to build the genuinely affordable homes Londoners desperately want and deserve. And on air pollution and the climate emergency, we'll take the bold action that's required for the sake of our children and our children's children. The path to becoming a cleaner, greener and more sustainable city is not always going to be easy. There'll be resistance from some quarters, but I'm prepared for that. It won't dampen my resolve, lower our ambitions or slow our pace. Instead, London will press on and spearhead the transition to a greener economy and a healthier city. So watch this space, because I promise to lead from the front on this issue, crafting the bold blueprint of what's possible in a global city like ours. Lastly, I want to touch on something I said in my acceptance speech about the importance of unity. The election results around the UK clearly showed that our country and even our city remain deeply divided. So I pledge to use this second term to do everything I can to build the bridges that bring us closer together, rather than the walls that drive us apart. Because as we recover and rebuild from this pandemic, we simply must use this moment of national recovery to strive for a moment of national healing 
too. So I'll work to strengthen the bonds that hold together our truly diverse city. I'll focus on what unites us and our shared hopes and dreams for the future, rather than what divides us. And I'll reach out to the government so that we can work constructively for the benefit of London and the whole country. Let me finish with this. We know, we know we've got our work cut out. But I return to City Hall more optimistic and ambitious than ever before, more determined to live up to the trust you've placed in me, more motivated than ever to rebuild our city as a greener, safer, and more prosperous place to live. A place that's not weakened by inequality or division, but strengthened by our diversity, our unity, and our sense of common purpose. So let's answer the call of history by seizing this moment together. Let's remind the world why our city is so special. And let's build the bridges that will bring our city and our country closer together for the benefit of everyone. I know a brighter future is within our grasp. Thank you.